is Robin Ann Tom, a sculptor from Brooklyn, New York. I moved here in 1973. Went to Abraham Lincoln High School and decided to go into art as a career when I was in high school. I always loved the arts. Actually, I was going to be a bookkeeper and I said, I'll go to school to be a bookkeeper and I'll do art on the side. And then last minute I said, nope, we love doing the art, we're doing that full time. The teacher, Jacob Puellos, got me to sculpting. I did my first stone carving of a swan and I was addicted ever since I touched it. I have two lines of sculpture. One line of sculpture is the realism, where I um, capture typical American history, American icons, such as diesel jeans, jackets, boots, sneakers, wine bottles, pencils, Heinz ketchup, and various brands of cookies like Milano's and Oreos. Well, my realistic, my main theme is capturing American history. 2,000 years from now, tube of toothpaste is going to look totally different than my tube of toothpaste. The realism, the expression is really in the finished product, not in the form itself. In other words, like a bottle of Heinz ketchup, you're really making fun of a typical American object that nobody really looks at, and you're bringing it into light so people see Heinz ketchup, that's America. To give you an idea, how many hours it takes to finish a piece. Well, for example, a pair of boxing gloves. They're carved out of Carrera marble. I did that in 19, no, not 19, 2008, summer of 08, when I went to Colorado. I was there for two and a half weeks. I did two, the two boxing gloves in two and a half weeks. I rocked them out. Then I um, took them back to New York and to polish them. It took 126 hours to polish them. Well, it's funny, I keep pushing, I keep pushing, you know, I figure the more you push, something's got to pop. One time I was, I won a gold medal of an award. It was the Allied Artist of America. And I won the gold medal for my Milano cookies. And I had no idea how prestigious the award was until after I won it. On my abstract line, the abstract pieces are more an expression of my gut. I usually do not make a detailed model of my abstract pieces. I have an idea what I want to do. I'll take a piece of ribbon, tie a knot, just to get the direction of the forms, and then I just go from there and carve. The wine knots are created as, it was really like a gimmick, and I sort of did it as a challenge to design something that's functional, that's, design something that's functional and inexpensive. Back in the 80s, I was commissioned to do my first Torah design. And I started doing, designing Sephardic Torah cases to use them as a sculpture, to create the composition as a, as a three-dimensional sculpture or painting or relief, rather than just a surface design. About 20,000 pounds of stone in my garage. And <laughs> which I get when I go away to the summer I go to Marble, Colorado, this sculpting symposium, and there's an importer there who imports stones from all over the world. And I usually just pick out the exotic stones, like blue onyx, yellow onyx, a piece of fluoride, um, a piece of honeycomb calcite. I got a lot of jewels in the garage. <laughs> Not the typical garage in Brooklyn. This is the compressor. 
It gives me air in the basement. Being a sculptor saved my life. What a way. Because that's your rep, that's your course when you have trauma, when you have frustration and you have stress, you go downstairs and you blast. <laughs> and that's that's a great thing about being an artist. It's like I don't choose at this point in my life, I don't choose to be a sculptor. I have to be a sculptor.